the highest paying entry level jobs. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, but before we do that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, careers, and degrees that will lead you to success, and we talk about avoiding some of the common financial traps that people fall for all the time. Now, if that's something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell to see more content like this. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. There's a lot of careers and industries out there where you have to work for years in order to secure the bag. You got to start at the bottom, work your way up, and that might take years. Or there's a lot of careers out there where you have to get creative with it because there's really no entry-level jobs, and so it's called using your imagination. But these careers that we're talking about today are going to be ones where you can go right into an entry-level position right after college, or even in some cases, you don't need schooling at all. You can just go in, start securing the bag right away. You're not going to have to wait 10 or 20 years before you start making pretty good money. So number 10 on the list is going going to be a software developer. Also known as a coder, this is somebody who creates computer software. And software is basically the programming and operating information that someone can use in order to tell a computer how to work. Now one interesting thing to note about software development, and I'm just going to be blunt here, it's kind of a young person's game. The average age of a software developer in the United States, for instance, is about 32 years old. To put that in perspective, the average age of a lawyer, for instance, in the US is going to be around 50. Now there's many different reasons for this. One of them is that it's just generally speaking a pretty new field. And so a lot of people who were born maybe in the 50s, for instance, didn't even have access to computers when they were young. And so of course they didn't become software developers. But another thing, and this is kind of important, is that the technology industry, the field is changing so fast, technology is advancing so fast, that you're having to learn new languages and new frameworks just to keep up to date. Now many older developers will end up moving into management positions where instead of doing a lot of the coding, they're going to just be in an oversight role where they make sure that projects get done. Others will end up specializing in like one language or one framework and they'll basically be like the world's renowned expert on that one language and so people will kind of come to them almost like as a consultant. Others will make a ton of money at a young age and then they'll end up retiring early just because they don't have to work anymore. A lot of the people that are involved in the FIRE movement, which is financial independence retire early, you see this a lot on Reddit and sometimes on YouTube, are software developers. Others end up retiring early, but it's not because they have a bunch of money, it's simply because they can't keep up. And this is kind of just an unfortunate reality of the technology industry. Now it's kind of controversial, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about ageism and all that sort of thing. Pretty big controversy in the technology industry, I'm not really gonna get into that. Now there are several different ways for you to become a developer. Getting a computer science degree would be one of them, of course. I've talked about that a lot on this channel, especially if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of experience already, coding, I think getting a computer science degree is a great choice. You can also go to coding boot camps, you can take online classes, and some people are even able to teach themselves how to code. Now this is one where you can go right into it and make pretty good money, and then there's even more opportunity beyond that to make like really, really good money. You can check out websites like uh, levels.fyi if you wanna see what some of these companies in Silicon Valley, Seattle, and New York are paying some of their software developers. There's developers at Facebook, for instance, that are making over a million dollars a year, although that is pretty rare. The big point here is technology and specifically software development, learning how to code. I think this is a huge opportunity. Very, very valuable skill to learn. It's pretty future-proof in my opinion as well because sure, there's gonna be a lot of things that are automated, but you're gonna be the one who is programming those things that automate. And I'm actually practicing what I'm preaching. I'm teaching myself Python right now, and I do have a little project on the back burner that I may or may not release this year. We'll see, it might be early next year. And it's gonna have something to do with Python and coding, and I think it's gonna be really cool. So. Stay tuned for that. Number nine on the list is gonna be uh, pretending to be a dog on OnlyFans. You want a treat? You want a treat? <laughs> sit, sit. Now, I'm only halfway kidding about this one. Um, you might be laughing at the girl in the video, but guess what? She makes over six figures pretending to be a dog. And that's not six figures a year, six figures a month. <laughs> So I saw this the other day and the first thing I thought was, what am I doing with my life? Go to your bed right now. Go to your bed. 
But anyways, now that I've made you lose all faith in humanity, the real number nine is going to be systems engineering. Now, it's kind of hard to explain what systems engineers do, but basically they take the whole system of, let's say, a product life cycle, for instance, and they figure out what each individual part needs to do. So they design, integrate, and manage complex systems over their life cycle. So not only are you going to be using your engineering expertise, but it's also kind of a business-related degree as well. Now, if you're anything like me, when you you hear about an engineering degree you might be like mmm that sounds kind of hard. I don't know about that, Chief. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Engineering degrees are really, really difficult. A lot of people go into engineering and they end up dropping out. It has one of the highest dropout rates out of any type of major. That's actually one reason why I don't rank engineering degrees as high, just because of the fact that the average person probably isn't going to want to put themselves through engineering school that four years, which a lot of the time turns into like five or six years because of how difficult it is. And sometimes it's not even about how smart you are. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys watching this are smart enough to get an engineering degree, but it, a lot of it is just hard work. You know, I lived in a scholarship hall, for instance, when I was an undergraduate, lived with 50 different dudes in a scholarship hall. A bunch of them were engineers. Most of them just studied all the time. Like uh, they didn't really have a life. The most that they would do is they'd take a break from studying to play Skyrim or something like that. When it was finals time or midterms, these guys, they'd come out of their little study caves and they'd have like, you know, black rings around their eyes looking like a raccoon. And I'll be real with you guys. At 18 years old, when I went to college, I don't think I would have been ready for the workload that engineers have to do. I wasn't mature enough at that time. I probably would have ended up dropping out. But if you're big brain, you're really passionate about the subject, you can definitely do it. Now this particular one, systems engineering, it's kind of like a mixture of a project manager and an engineer. They work with the individual pieces within a system and they coordinate how they're going to interact with each other. And this is great because you'll be working with a bunch of different fields, a bunch of different departments. You'll be determining who is going to do what, who's going to be responsible for what and when it should be done. So you might have a team of mechanical engineers that's working on the mechanical aspect of a project. Let's say it's a car, for instance. Then you got a team of electrical engineers and computer engineers that are gonna be working on the hardware within the car. Then you got a team of software engineers that will be working on the software that they're going to use in the car. And then you've got the system engineers that make sure all of them are on the same page and the project moves forward as it should. Now, this requires a ton of technical knowledge and also a lot of business savvy. And this is one where I look at it, there's no way that this career is ever going to be automated. And even if it was automated, the skills that you can learn from this career would be skills that businesses would love to have in the future, even if they're a little bit unrelated. So this is one where by default, you're probably going to end up working in a management position eventually, but it also pays really well right off the bat. Number eight on the list is going to be a Java developer. So Java developers are a specialized type of coder and generally they're gonna work with web developers and software engineers. So they're gonna go ahead and implement Java into different websites, uh, software, as well as applications. Now Java is very common and because of that, a lot of people choose to specialize in it. And I'm not gonna lie, this one is pretty dang <laughs> spicy to specialize in, okay? Now, like I mentioned for a moment before, when it comes to coding, there's generally two ways for you to to progress in your career. The first one is to move towards more of a leadership or a project management role. And then the second is to specialize in something and gain extreme technical expertise. So basically you're like the master. So I think I told this story like one or two times before on this channel, but it's a really good one and I'll keep it brief. When I was in grad school in Las Vegas, there was this particular McDonald's that I lived right next to that I would go there to study because their coffee is a lot cheaper than Starbucks. And there was always this guy there who would sit on his computer and it seemed like he was just relaxing. Sometimes he'd be playing video games or answering emails and eventually we saw each other enough times that we started talking and he told me that he was basically a database architect now I eventually asked him about the career and I kind of asked him you know how much do you make how much do database architects make in general and he told me that he works on average somewhere around 10 to 20 hours a week sometimes even less than that and he was making well over two hundred thousand dollars a year now this is a great example of somebody who went down the technical expertise route he's basically someone who's recognized as you know somebody who knows more about database architecture than just about anyone in the world and so he was able to have a really cushy chill remote job where he worked at McDonald's and he was making over two hundred thousand dollars a year he even told me that he actually taught his nephew how to do database architecture as well and he kind of clowned on his nephew he was like man my nephew is not smart at all 
It took me a long time to teach him, but he's also making over six figures a year now. It was kind of hilarious to hear him clown on his nephew. But yeah, that kind of just goes to show that, you know, if you learn these languages, you get really good at them. There's just a ton of opportunity out there. And I would sit there just like, memorizing just like pages and chapters and books of medical information, thinking to myself, maybe I should have went into coding instead. So yeah, anyways, Java can be a really good one for you to gain technical expertise in, so I'm not surprised that it was mentioned. Number seven on the list is going to be an implementation consultant. So basically, in layman's terms, what they do is, let's say you're working for a software company and they just sold a huge project to a single hospital, okay? So they sold some electronic software to a hospital. Now, it's probably part of an entire hospital network, but they're gonna try it out at that one hospital first see if they like it, and then if they like it, they're going to go ahead and uh, do it at every single hospital, and it's gonna be like a huge contract, millions and millions of dollars. So it's very important for the company to make sure that that software gets rolled out very, very efficiently. So I'm sure a lot of people watching this before have had to learn a new software before. It's a huge headache, especially if there's a lot of bugs or anything like that. And so what implementation consultants do is they would work for the software company and they would go to that hospital while it's being rolled out and they would be there to not only install everything, but get everybody trained up and make sure that all the bugs or anything like that, all of that is taken care of. They'll talk to the IT department, the hospital management, they'll talk to the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists. They'll make sure that everyone is on the same page. They'll take care of all the different glitches, hangups, any questions that anybody has. If there are any bugs in the system, they'll make sure that they get fixed and they will stay at the hospital as long as they need to in order to roll out the software. Now, as you can see from a company's perspective, this is an extremely useful position to have. It could make the difference between the hospital just trying the software out, maybe they just buy it for one hospital versus the hospital buying for an entire network of different hospitals. That could be the difference between zero dollars and millions and millions of dollars in contracts. Very cool career, very useful. Also one that's future proof in my opinion. I don't see this one ever being automated. Number six on the list is going to be UX designer. Now the UX stands for the user experience. You also hear them referred to as UX UI designers, user experience, user interface. So what they focus on is the user experience, you know, users like you and I, and their interaction with different types of technologies like websites, applications, uh, cars, for instance. So this combines different aspects of technology, of course, but also design, business, art, and you could even say psychology. So people with this skill set are supposed to be able to wear many different hats. Now, most of them are going to have an emphasis on software development, of course, so you might be seeing kind of a common theme here. The big thing here is to provide a seamless user interface experience. So let me give you an example here. Have you ever used like a government website or just a website that's really badly designed? It's almost impossible for you to figure out where everything is. It's like you're just trying to do one thing and you can't figure out how to do it. This sort of thing actually kills businesses and a lot of them aren't even aware of it. What a UX designer would do is they would basically make it to where it's as intuitive as possible. So they would think about, okay, if a person is on this web page on this website, what are they likely to be looking for? How can I make what they're most likely to be looking for as obvious as possible so that they can get to it? So this is another career that's very creative, but it's also pretty practical. So if you're someone who's very artistic, this could be a good one for you to look into. It's gonna be especially interesting to see how it evolves with the onset of touch interface, uh, voice control, augmented reality, virtual reality. Very interesting field. Number five on the list is going to be a product designer. And this one is basically all about imagining, designing, and creating products that are meant for mass production. So you want to make them as beautiful, aesthetic, and ergonomic as possible, but you also wanna keep in mind the practical side of things and make sure that it's a product that can be mass produced. So this could be anything from designing beautiful chairs to designing a futuristic Cybertruck with bulletproof windows. Ha, ha, ha.
Number four on the list is going to be an investment banking analyst. So basically you are going to be analyzing different investment banking criteria, and then you're gonna be making a bunch of different presentations and giving advice and guidance to investment bankers. Another career where you have a very nice salary right off the bat with an entry level job. Now it is interesting to note here that, you know, a lot of the time investment banks are gonna hire finance and accounting majors, of course, for these positions, but it's actually not just limited to that. Some investment banks take the strategy of just hiring the smartest people possible. They're basically going purely for brain power. Their strategy is to hire people who graduate from majors like math and physics and engineering. And basically they think that if they just hire the smartest people in the world, all of the problems will kind of just work themselves out. So they want to hire smart people and then train them how to do investment banking. Whereas some of the other companies want to hire people who are already trained how to do investment banking, you know, accounting majors and finance majors. And they think that they're a little bit more specialized to do it. Now, one thing to note here is the hours, especially when you first start, are going to be very long and hard. There's a ton of money in the finance industry, and if you want to be able to work your way up to the top levels, you are going to have to work hard. You're going to have to prove yourself most of the time. A lot of the time, these jobs are going to have like a base pay, and then there's going to be some incentive bonus structure worked in there. Now, one really cool thing about this job and just the finance industry in general is there's pretty much no ceiling to how much you can make. I talked about this in my careers that create the most millionaires video, where a lot of people in the finance industry end up in the top 99th point ninth percentile. So they're the very, very tippy top. And I went over over an article by a guy who basically works with people who have a lot of wealth and he teaches them how to invest and all that sort of thing. So he works exclusively with people who are super rich. And he said in this article that a lot of his clients that get to that high, high level where they're like, you know, I got like over $10 million or something like that are people who come from the finance industry. So take that for what it is. I think finance is one of those things where it's very high risk and high reward. You know, there's people that start off at the very bottom, but even the ones that start off at the bottom are still making pretty decent money and then after you know working for many years they can become a senior level you know advisor or something like that in the company and they can make over five million dollars a year I'm not even kidding here so this one can be really great for certain personality types people who don't mind working like 80 plus hours a week uh, working super hard and they're okay with doing that for many many years before they get to the point where they can have more of a normal job I don't have the personality type to do that sort of job for me, I value my free time and I value job satisfaction and not having to work like 80 hours a week much more than I value how much money I make. So I would much rather have a job where I'm making a little bit less, but I have better job satisfaction and overall just life satisfaction because of the fact that I have so much free time. Number three on the list is going to be product manager. Now this is a very interesting career and the way I like to describe this one is it's kind of like you're an entrepreneur but you're within a giant business. Okay, so think about Amazon and all the different little mini businesses that have sprung off of Amazon. You know, you've got Amazon Prime, you've got the Amazon Prime uh, Video where it's basically kind of like a Netflix sort of thing. You've obviously got the shipping part of Amazon. They're trying to get into the pharmacy world. They're trying to basically make like a mail order pharmacy right now. They just bought pill pack for like, I think $700 million. Okay. So Amazon is basically starting all these different mini businesses that are under the umbrella of the giant Amazon corporation. So basically what a lot of businesses do, especially big ones, is they'll have product managers that are almost like the CEO or the entrepreneur of that one product that the umbrella business is starting. So let's say that Amazon sees that the US is apparently outlawing TikTok, I guess, and they want to start their own version in order to take up all of that market share. So Jeff Bezos is going to get himself a product manager. He's going to make them the leader of that TikTok wannabe initiative. The product manager is going to make sure you know all of the important things when it comes to that particular business. So you're going to want to know what market you're targeting. What product is the problem solving? How is the product going to be marketed? What is the launch strategy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're responsible for assembling different teams. You're going to have like, you know, the marketing team and the engineering team and then the software development side. And they're going to be responsible for making sure that everyone's communicating with each other and they're meeting the deadlines. Now, all these things are going to be the responsibility of the product manager. I think this is a great career in general. It teaches you leadership. It teaches you all kinds of different skills that are very valuable. I don't think this one will ever be automated. And I think this one is even better if you think you might want to become an entrepreneur in the future. This is almost like training wheels for learning how to start your own business. This is also one of the most common careers people go into after getting an MBA. With this
this career, you're going to have to learn how to wear many different hats. You're going to have to learn management, leadership, uh, sales, marketing, all kinds of different things. You're going to have to be pretty good in every single one. It's basically just like being a CEO or an entrepreneur, but there's kind of like training wheels. You know, you got a big company that you're working under that's funding you. There's a lot more to this one. It's another career that I really like, but I'll go ahead and stop there just for the sake of the video. Number two on the list is going to be a software engineer. Hey, another technology related career. What do you know? So software engineers all the time, they get confused with computer programmers or software developers. Think about it like this. Let's say you're designing a house. You're going to have an architect which would be more like the software engineer who designs the house itself, make sure that it's stable, make sure it's not gonna blow over, make sure it's got a good foundation. If there's an earthquake, it's not gonna collapse on itself and all that good stuff. Then you've got the contractor who actually builds out the house itself. That would be more like the software developer. They're the ones who actually write the code. So that's the difference between the two. Software engineers probably know a lot of code themselves. There is some overlap there, of course, but overall software engineering is an excellent excellent one to get into. Number one on the list is going to be a data scientist. So data scientists in general are going to be employed by businesses. They're going to have some business expertise in order to analyze different data that can help the business make more money and be more successful. So basically as a data scientist, you're gonna get a bunch of junk numbers that really don't make any sense. And you're gonna to have to make sense of those numbers, figure out what you can glean, what you can tell from those numbers and how your findings can actually help the business. Now, this is usually gonna be data that has something to do with either sales or marketing. You could say this is another degree that combines business skills with technology skills, which is always a good combination. So basically what you're gonna do is take a bunch of crappy, unorganized, organized data and you are going to organize it in such a way that not only does it make sense but you can make business decisions based on it and you can explain it to the business people who might not be as technically talented. So this will require not just coding and problem solving skills, but also a lot of math and statistics as well. Now I got these numbers from glassdoor.com and usually on my videos I use Payscale, not because it's better, but just because it's a little bit easier to keep everything organized so that I'm not comparing apples to oranges. I wouldn't want to use Glassdoor in one video and then Payscale in the next video, just because it's difficult to organize them and their methodologies for how they rank different careers might be a little bit different. But yeah, check out this blog post that I got the video ID from. I agree with everything they say. I think they analyze the data really well. You'll see that there's a lot of technology related careers on here, which I wasn't surprised at at all. But yeah, go ahead, smash the like button. If you haven't done it already, why haven't you? Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you leave, make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.